Hi, everyone. It's been so wonderful to be together this week in prayer, in learning, in celebrating a new marriage, even if it's just been virtually. It's really in a time like this when the strength of a community is tested. And I feel so lucky to be a part of this sacred community, one that steps up to the call, one that knows that building a world of chesed is always possible, even on Zoom. But this week has also been incredibly, incredibly challenging. It's been painful to read news reports of the tragedy our world has already experienced and alarming to read about projected suffering that is to come to our community and our world. This week, I noticed acutely how much of this is just simply out of mine or any of our control. And that feeling is incredibly vulnerable to sit in the quiet of this moment to pray and to cry. What is my small role in this global pandemic? What are the bounds of my world now when so much of the world I usually inhabit is out of reach? Of course, in this moment, the Torah teaches me. This book, this Torah has been carried by generations of people who have known great joy and also great pain. It is the mirror through which we read the words, and then we see ourselves just a little bit more clearly. This week's Parshat, Parshat Sav, explains the instructions the priests will follow in offering the Ola, the burnt offering. The text teaches, this is the Torah of the burnt offering. The priest, in his white linen clothing, should remove the ashes from the previous day's offering, He should place them beside the altar, noticing that all that remains of that great offering is this ash, that the priest himself and that everything around him is but dust and ashes. He must then change his clothes and bring the ashes outside of the camp to a pure place. Meanwhile, the Torah instructs, the fire on the altar shall be kept burning eternally never to go out. Every morning, the priest shall feed wood to it, lay out the burnt offering on it, and turn into smoke the offering to God. And then the Torah repeats, A perpetual fire shall be kept burning on the altar, not to go out. Why does this parsha begin its story by talking about the cleaning of the previous offering before explaining how the next one will be conducted. The Torah could have, and perhaps should have, begun with the instructions for one Ola. The Torah uses this order to remind us that a new connection with the holy will come only from the places where the ashes once laid. The priest may want to rid himself of these old ashes, but the Torah forbids it. The instruction is to leave the ashes to the side change your clothes, and then only then can you proceed. The next offering, the next opportunity for connectedness, comes only out of the remnants of what came before. What would it look like this morning to recognize that the ashes are the place where my next moment of triumph and growth sprouts? There's no joy in this destruction, but there is possibility and immense hope. And what about the eternal fire? The Sfat Emet teaches that this ish tamid, this eternal fire, does not only rest on the altar, but really it lies in the soul of every person. He writes, In the soul of every Jew, there lies a hidden point that is a flame with love of God, a fire that cannot be put out. There needs to burn in the soul a fiery longing to worship the Creator, and this longing has to be renewed each and every day. As we read in the Torah, the priest shall shall burn wood upon it each morning. Everyone who worships God may be called a priest, and this arousal of love in Israel's hearts is the avodat halev, the service of the heart, that which takes place of the sacrificial offerings. So the story of the offering in Parshat Sav is the story of the longing of our souls. 
each of us striving to be connected to community and to God's holiness. And that fire within each of us needs constant fuel. Our prayer, our acts of kindness, our acts of justice sustain the deep longing within each of us. The fire is the spark through which we confront the darkness in our lives and in the world. And later, Svat Emet continues, This is why the text says that the offering must burn all night until the morning. The phrase appears redundant. Why does it need to say until the morning if we already said all night? This is to show that the very mixture of distracted thoughts and their darkness in the worshiper's heart itself will itself bring about the morning. For this is the order. There was evening and there was morning. The mixture of good and evil is purified. Weekday prepares for the Sabbath. This world prepares for the next. So too, the struggle in the heart of the one who serves goes on all night until the morning. Our exile is also called night, but it too will bring the morning. Judaism reminds us that at the moment it seems the most dark, we have only reached the beginning of the story. Our tradition is so, so beautiful because it forces us to keep a holy perspective, a perspective that things will get better. They'll always get better. Morning will come. The Sfat Emet teaches that the interaction between our distractions and prayer or the darkness in our world with that eternal fire that rests within us, that's the place that produces the morning. It's not a righteous suffering. It's not a reward we experience for the suffering. It's just inevitable. Darkness comes, but the spark within us will remain lit, and then light will come. On Pesach, we live this story. Think about the story of the Exodus, the night of uncertainty and danger, the time of quiet when the angel of death hovers over the expanse. But then comes the morning, the place of Geulah, of redemption, of entering the narrow space of the sea, being reborn into a possibility that is wholly anew. And the spark is the energy we carry to confront those possibilities. It's the energy that allowed the Israelites to take those first scary steps into the sea. And it's the spark that's helped so many of us remain at home and remain calm. And it's inspired many of us to find ways to care for the most vulnerable in our society, even from afar. The Svaramit teaches that each of us who tends the spark within is considered a priest. I think that each of us tends our own flame in a different way, but the flame is eternal and will never go out. It's the source of strength that we can always rely on, even in the grim parts of our story. So this Shabbat, let's spend 25 hours getting in touch with the Eish Tamid, the eternal spark within us all. Let us spend time with our families, eat good food, enjoy nature, enjoy each other. Let us pray, read, sing, and be still. Let us remember that this moment is just the beginning of the story. Because Pesach is coming, and we all know how the story ends. We are dancing on the other side of the sea, and we are finally free. Shabbat Shalom.